uh, hopefully that's going to save some of my cloud. Cool. All right. Okay, guys, we're going to jump straight into it today. I've got Nikki back, part two. Are we going to do a part three, Nick? Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yeah, thanks to all the all the comments and people that sent in other information around this too. It's been good. So um, you probably, I know you've, we, we, we're going to hash over a bit what we did last time or just let you do your presentation. Yeah, well, we can cover. So I've got a few of the photos that you put up last time. Um, just obviously, so if there's anyone that hasn't seen the first part, they can see what the building actually is and just some stuff we spoke about that we didn't actually have photos of it. And I think it's really significant about what the story behind this building and World War One in particular um, that seems to have set off what we're going through even to right to today, sort of what they've sort of started off over 100 years ago. Yeah. And you've gone, you've gone mute, Nick. Oh. Oh, no, you're right now. Okay. I'm not sure why. There's something going on with you. I can't send you emails. Yeah. Nobody do anything. It's weird. I know. Well, that's as soon as you loaded that video last week, 24 hours after that, they've shut me my emails down. I can't what? send. I, yeah. I could not send you an email. I couldn't even cut and paste. But anyway, that's, that's another story. All right. Where do you want to start? Well, I think when we mentioned this, we have to kind of start with the granite a piece of granite that started this whole thing off. So I got this from um, Granite Bay down in Noosa, which happens to be right next to Hell's Gate and just down from the Devil's Kitchen. Um, but this was a result of going to the Lismore Tatarian event. And, you know, Cindy, your friend that you've done a few interviews with, mentioned that we need to get back to country. And I thought, well, I've got most stuff around me. I've got the, the water, the oceans right there, trees, that sort of stuff. What else am I lacking? And I thought, well, there's a lot of granite around here. And I went and grabbed a piece of this rock and I looked into granite and it sort of says that anything where the granite is actually hitting water, the granite is going to hold the memory that's within the water. Yeah, so wow. I thought, that's interesting. Yeah. So I thought, okay. So I went and grabbed a piece. I thought, well, this rock's going to have something to say that, you know, they've all been smoothed over from just the waves crashing over them for so long. And it's been sitting on my desk now for four and a half months. And then all of a sudden I started to look into, well, what other uses? I mean, I've worked in the construction industry for 23 years and I've only ever seen it really as a bench tops and things like that. But then I started looking into it and as soon as I started searching granite, the shrine came up. And at the time, I was watching, we're doing the God Matrix stuff with your course, watching Tatarin Australia videos and they did one on this shrine about the, the sovereignty protest that they did there. Yeah. And um, the shrine, yeah, the granite came up on this building. Now, I thought from looking at it, it was actually a sandstone building. So when I saw that it's actually all granite, that's what started me looking into and like, oh, wow, okay. And that's where this started basically for this building. And the as soon as cool, I started looking into it. What a cool <laughs> intro from like, um, yeah, from following the granite. And it, it all started intuitively. It's great, yeah. Yeah. And then as soon as I started looking into this building, it just has gotten weirder and weirder by the day. It's just crazy what this building is actually being used for, what it seems to be used for. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll just, this is obviously the main entrance of the building. We're not going to go through all the statues and stuff, but just a background on it. Uh, it was constructed, well, they put the foundation stone in in 1927, and the actual building was then opened in 1934. But they didn't start the construction until 1928. So it's six years of construction using apparently exactly 6,000 tonnes of granite. They had uh, 6,000 unemployed veterans that were forced into slave labour to build this building that <laughs> nobody wanted. The public hated this thing. They did not want it. It was pagan, Masonic, Egyptian, Grecian. They didn't understand it. Yeah. No one had any money. So they, you know, they, they said that people donated funds, but then they've actually got a reference to the councils, the war memorials and um, governors at the time saying that we're going to make taxpayers We've got to use the taxpayers' money well. Okay, so then you've taxed them to make this happen rather than everything was a donation. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So not quite the same first, story. First, like, contradiction in story, yeah. Yeah. So um, I'll just flick through. So this is obviously just the main entrance of the building. So we're just going to go through, and then you've got your aerial. So this is the work, first one you said that, oh, it's the whole sperm in the egg. So we've got the creation story happening here. These gardens were only done, I think it was 2014, so the yeah. sperm gardens on the side. So that's a later addition. 
to the actual original structure. This is just stipulating that it is on holy ground. Now, I actually found yesterday, there used to be this Grange mansion that was on this site. It was built in that the 1890s, but the guy who lived in it was Sir Edward Hutton, and he was a general, and he actually established the Australian Army in 1902. Just happened to be, this is where the shrine was put. They didn't tell you that, and that's not really in the book either, not that I've found. So we had a, he had a residence on that, in that area. Was that the yeah. only place? Well, that's the only one I found, and you can't find much on it, but it was destroyed by fire in 1912. At some point in that period, it became a boarding house, and 20 people apparently didn't survive that boarding house fire. It just happened to be the same guy that created the Australian Army in 1902 that uh, lived in that mansion. So that's not part of the shrine's narrative, but that's where the shrine's being put now. Oh, yeah. So it is on the holy ground. Mm. So that's, now we've obviously got that engraved on the building. So the next one, this is just, this is the crypt. This is what they said was just going to originally be a room for records. I mean, look at the detail they've put in the ceiling and it's all sandstone sand. interior. Yeah. So we're never going to open this apparently. It's just going to be for record keeping. Yeah. Which is pretty elaborate for that. And this is the old, you know, the replica looking Ark of the Covenant. This is what they tell us. The just the foundation, the donation receipts are all sitting in this box. Nuns on display. It's obviously it's just weird. It's why is it there? They said in the grand opening when they laid the foundation stone, they actually buried this under the foundation stone. So then they don't really elaborate to what this one then is for. So yeah, it's a bit weird. There's no, um, yeah, there's no signage or anything for that either, is there? Or like indication when you walk in what it is. It's just there. Yeah, it's just there. But it's clearly like the that's the centerpiece of the whole room. Yeah. <laughs> so this room, obviously, very Greek or Roman looking with all these pillars, and that was the biggest issue for people at the time they're saying why is it so egyptian greek and roman like what's what's the relevance and you certainly if you're looking at world war one there's no relevance to why this building is the way it is but there's a journalist that was referring particularly to this room and one of the comments that he made is described this temple as a temple to mars to keep the wars alive now you recently did on your that uh, course you're doing with madeline madeline actually mentioned how mars was associated with wars so that, as soon as she said that, I'm like, oh, wow, there's that comment. The journalist was talking about this was built as a temple to Mars to keep the war alive. It's just a strange comment. It's in the book. And nothing further said by that. It's just, just a random. When did, the, when did the journalist say that? What year was that? Well, that was in the, the writing of this. So he did a, an actual, did a, a book, a memorial type book around this construction. So it would have been around the time it was opened. So 1934 or so. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, wow, wow. What, a, what a, re a reference to Mars. Strange, very strange. <laughs> and then that's it. It just moves on from there. There's nothing else to it. And then you've got the ray of light. So this, and we mentioned this in the first one, and it's, they said it took 144 pages of math to make this actually work. And you mentioned there's something about the 144. Yeah, well, I, I found that, Nick, because um, – I was looking at it yesterday and I remember it was in when I read source field investigations and he he writes all about the um the Russian pyramid studies, you know then the Russian pyramids. Yeah. So they were built, the guy that built them, this Ukrainian guy, um, they're all 40 meters or 144 feet. So and he was very specific about them being 144, but it's encoded in um the pyramid map like this. All pyramid mathematics as well is the one the one four four. And it was had the the limestone casing blocks. There's 144,000 of them on yeah. Giza. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> so it's yeah, it's a key number. But yeah. uh, didn't Jason mention the 144 too? Was um it's coded within the 20 within the family. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think I heard him mention 144 as well. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, go on. This one, this light now, so just a mental note for this one, because this is going to come up with um, the recent video Jason just did about the whole Apollyon and the breaking of the first seal. This being the ray of light, there's going to be quite a, a few references to this because Apollo, if you look at Apollo, he is the god of light. So the sun god, god of light. So, and then we have this. So just a mental note for later reference. This is just how that structure works. 
and hitting the word love on the greater love hath no man. And I really think that word love needs to be replaced with lust or possibly even sex, the way they have referred to this building. Yeah, like we, kind of like we mentioned last time, the yeah the, the sex reference with the uh, yeah. with it being uh, possibly being like a, a birth canal in a womb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bit strange. Anyway, you can see that. I put this one back in because the eye of providence. So it's surrounded again by the ray of light. So that's what that sunbeam coming off that the pyramid with the eye in the center, the ceiling of that. Uh, shrine where the sun ray comes through is called the eye and um, then just this was handed to the first uh, the world war one vets this laurel leaf that the olive sort of branch that goes around that coin that's shown for the ottoman empire all the sultans had this wreath around all of their pictures so it's um and the reference to made for the empire well they certainly are not stipulating which empire they're talking about yeah this one, I put this in because we mentioned this. So we, there are some construction photos. So it does look like it was potentially built when they said it was. But this on Tassus, so this design was done by the, the same creator of this, the Zeus statue. This is apparently how they do a lot of these Doric, the pillars at the front of these buildings. And again, I don't know if there's something to that because there's 16 outside and there's 16 inside of those Doric pillars. Yeah. But this is how they work out the, the height and the angles of all the buildings. And when we go into the summoning or what I think they're doing with this building, and the, you know, we said it's some sort of portal or they're trying to get activated in some capacity. The fact that they've got this design so that peak would hit two and a half kilometers up in the air, sort of you make you wonder why have they gone to all this trouble? So there must are be some they, reason um, to it. Are these, like, are these pictures out of the book of the construction? Are they the only ones? No, that's just like, I haven't seen those. This is, they're off the internet, those construction ones. There are a couple of others, but it's pretty much this. You see the foundation, and then the building's finished without the roof. You don't. There's nothing in between. Yeah. Yeah. So they're just putting the last ones. You see is the roof going on. That's it. Everything else is done in the middle. That one. Uh, this one. Oh, there you go. So that's that's the last one. So you have the foundation, and then that. Yeah, and then it's yeah, it's basically fully built without the yeah without the cigarette roof. Yeah. Yeah, and then that's just showing the aerial of that construction of it. So it's some sort of cross or, you know, who knows what it is that it's got lots of patterning in that. It could even be one of them, could even be the female symbol. Like it's just there's all sorts of stuff with that layout and pathways that they've created. Yeah. Uh, we spoke about this. So that's the ball window, the ball wall window. I can't remember where it's actually come from. Yeah, it um, when we're in there, it didn't say, didn't it? It just said it's a, yeah. it's a homage or a reference to the ball wall. Yeah. Um, and then you've got yeah, you got the Roman helmet and the yeah, the, the sword and the yeah, was it the roses down the bottom? Yeah, and so that sword also right that goes back to Apollo. So Apollo is the one that's swinging around this sword as well. So sword, the bow and arrow. I think um, yeah, another one whether it was Nimrod or someone else had a sword as well. So there's a few strange references, and then of course the Giza pyramid sitting there. Which is where the first World War One vets went straight to. So Britain goes to war with Germany, and our guys went straight to Cairo. Yeah, and it's 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 almost like a rub in, in your face. Obviously, you can see why they would put the Giza Pyramid in there because there was that reference of when they were training there in World War One. But you know, it doesn't. Yeah, it's it's definitely a homage that it's put in there, isn't it? Yeah, and then you've got the photos that I've put these in on purpose. You actually sent me this one. Where all, all the guys, are, all the World War One vets, are standing on the Giza Pyramid, and it's claimed to be the most famous photo of World War One for Australia. But then you look at the one to the other side. Like you've got they've taken over drum kits. Like this is all a photo with they've got musical instruments all through that picture. It's kind of like, do they know what they were going there for? They don't seem to be going there for the same reasons that we we're told, or certainly they weren't told that when they before they left. But they look pretty laid back. I mean, like you, you could so you could so theorize not to say what happened over there didn't happen, but like there may have very much been um, cover missions for why they were in Giza, right? It, um, Absolutely, definitely, definitely open to that. Yeah. Oh, I definitely think horrendous things happened to these people, but it doesn't look like they were told what they were going there for. So I wouldn't be surprised if they were going there to retrieve ancient relics and things that they were. Um, 
whatever happened. And then yeah. horrible things happen to them. But it's the question of who actually did that. Well, it's like, it's even in the the modern day how they do how they do like a lot of black ops. They do them under the cover of music festivals or or other military operations, and then there'll be a smaller black ops group that's actually there to do the real mission, and that's just the cover. Because yeah, what yeah, it's just interesting that they did their training. Yeah. Yeah. Right? <laughs> And then you've got that one. So, I mean, they've taken over a kangaroo. They're climbing all over the pyramid. I mean, this, they've apparently gone to war, fighting for their life, risking their lives for their country. And we're going to do a bit of a tour while we're here, I suppose. Like, it's, it's just strange. And then the photo, like the top photo where they've got the guys, um, they say that photo is actually the, the vets charging the Turkish trenches. But they've got their photographer. Make sure the photographer, he doesn't seem to be too concerned about his safety while they're taking a photo of all this stuff. And I did see, like, that that photo there made me think, because I remember Jason Brashears did a, an interview with Matt, who was who spent time, I think it was in both Iraq and Afghanistan, and they started doing, they did a bit of a video on the Civil War, and they could show how so much of the Civil War was just completely staged. Yeah, I mean, but, bad things happened, but it's, again, the narrative that we're told is not what actually happened. So is, is that is that one, um, the one of them charging, is that supposed to be, is that in Turkey? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they say. If you got someone there to take photos of it, I mean, wouldn't they be they're risking their lives just to take a photo, an action shot? Like, it's just crazy. Yeah, you're straight out of the trenches. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So this one, this actually jumped out to me when I first looked at the shrine because as much as they've got references all around the grounds of the shrine, this one, the one with all the pillars, is a memorial to the Hellenics. And then the one with the pine cones is to the Turkish. So... They've built actual structural monuments for just the Hellenic era. And again, you get it's going back to Alexander the Great time frame. I mean, they haven't mentioned Greece, but they've said Hellenics. Yeah. And then Turkey. And I think, well, why have you done it just for the two countries? Everything else has just got a little plaque. So why is there such a big thing for these two? Yeah, isn't that it's even isn't it called Helen Helen's Park or whatever that that little bit or Yeah, I think so. Yeah, but this is the yeah the the Hellenistic memorial section. This one, and I have no idea what the reference of these eight black cubes are in front of these ten pillars. Yeah, if anyone knows anything about that. And then, of course, you've got the pine cones for Turkey, but that was all about the pine tree or something that they were the lone pine. Yeah, well, then, I'll go back to that other one because you got the. Um... Oh, sorry, I'm making it. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. But yeah, it's almost because that's um because you got the pine reference there too, and it's like that's the eye as well, which is similar to like the satin one eye or the eye of Sauron, like in in Lord of the Rings, and it's a ring as well. So yeah. um, I don't yeah, because I've, I've spoken about that too. Is like the the manipulation through the mind, the mind's eye, and the pine cone. I didn't even know that bit was there. Yeah. And yeah. again, it's only the two. Why have you got just those two countries as an actual physical memorial? So yeah. When they were obviously in so many countries. Then just Giza, just showing off the how they do portray this to be an active portal. Um, I've heard Jason Brashears talk about how demonics can actually, once they're being, they know they're being exercised out of a human body, they can actually escape through Giza. They know this. And then what we'll get into about the actual shrine and other buildings where they're making reference to they're actually trying to summon underworld beings up into our realm. And that's what they use these structures for. And that's why they have to be built specifically out of the granite because the granite being so it's so connected to the earth and full of water, um, it's quite they're quite active. And then just showing the Orion's belt and how that structure apparently works with um I think that had the recent had Sirius was actually in Orion's belt just recently, I think. That was a, just that one. And then we know how connected the shrine is to Venus with all the goddess stuff yeah, I've got going on there. Now, put these two in because this one on obviously the LGBTQ one, that actually didn't end up happening. They had all this ready to go. <laughs> and two days before, it was canned because they were getting all these death threats for the staff at the shrine. So they had to pull this process. But this is the year after they've just had the protest for sovereignty and good old Dan's up there talking about how this is not a 
a building for a political statement or for anyone's personal agendas, and then they were planning this. I thought, okay, that's interesting. So you're not let, you're not going to let people protest for their sovereignty of what apparently the World War One vets were. That was what they were fighting for. What this building was meant to represent. That was a, it. Was a real that was like rubbing it in people's faces, yeah. wasn't that? All the all the veterans after yeah. they wouldn't allow them on. Yeah. So what yeah, about the exactly. next one? That you got the Queen's Jubilee. Queen's Jubilee. They lit this up. Why the shrine for the Queen's Jubilee? I mean, it's just. I mean, and the purple. The purple is a reference to the Phoenix. So the Phoenix Cataclysm events. That's what the purple represents. And I think that's why purple is so used in the masonry because it's that high illumination and that only the high levels of masonry know what the purple means. But it's why the royals wear it. You know, it's why it's referenced a lot in high level masonry. Yeah. Would that be what um, Jason was talking about with the uh, Apollo and the crown as well, too? Yeah. With it being, yeah. Um, yeah, it being the crown, crown chakra. Yeah. Yeah, I just thought this was a strange one. For all the buildings in Australia that have references to the Queen, I didn't think this one was the one that you'd probably light up in reference to that. But anyway, just a note. This one I've put on again because it's going to relate to what I'll bring up about the Ghostbusters movie and <laughs> the relation between this building and how, <laughs> yeah. how, weird, how weird this actually gets. So that's why this light on the roof stood out to me straight away when I saw that and the fact that it gets turned on only for the 6 a.m. dawn service is the only time they use it. So that's uh, that comes on once a year. That's only used on the 11-11, is it? No, this is the oh, that's Anzac, on the Anzac Day. Day dawn service. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So the 25th of April dawn service, that's the only time. But then if you have a look, again, I've put this roof in here in particular for a reason because it's going to reflect a similarity to the Ghostbusters one, which will have a, I think it's on the next slide. So that's just the... Step pyramid, the ziggurat roof. This is meant to be a stairway to heaven, a ladder to heaven. This is what they make this ziggurat. That's what it's all about. And yeah. then the eye, yeah, the eye in the middle. Well, with the with the twenty fifth of April too, because that's that's right um, in the middle of the Sabbath and the and the forty day sacrifice from yeah, um, yeah April to May the first. All right, now you were telling me about this shit with Ghostbusters, man. <laughs> You made this weird connection. I know. Okay, wanna, so this one you was explain, strong. Do you want to explain yeah, okay. the story why you've been so, in it? Yeah, so this one was actually, I was listening to Jason Bashir, listened to one of his videos, and he was talking about, so I was already looking into the shrine, and of course the shrine's got heaps of lines and references about the lines all around it, and he made a comment that before, at some point in time, it's obviously changed over to lines, but originally it used to be dogs, ancient dogs like the Anubis that used to be, that they'd be put out the front of buildings to protect whatever ancient relics or whatever sacred inside. I'm like, oh, that's interesting, like Ghostbusters, because the dogs, the two dogs that will, you know, they land up on this building, and they're hardly dogs, they're the most hideous-looking demonic things, but they yeah. are called dogs. And that's what just, oh, oh, Ghostbusters. And it made me go and put on the last scene, this Goza scene, and I just, as soon as I saw it, I'm like, oh, far out. And I didn't, in the middle image, you can actually see, and it took me 10 goes to actually even notice that double eye of Horace in between those glass doors at the back. Yeah. But there's just, even just this staircase, so that the, the way they've angled this shot when they're climbing up this ladder or the, the stairwells, just the angle, the same way they've done this step pyramid roof in the ziggurat roof inside the shrine. Yeah, it's very and similar. Yeah. yeah. And then the front where they, this very last scene, it's the Goza scene, so you can look it up, it's on YouTube, but it, Goza is the destroyer. So it's the Phoenix. This is completely talking about the Phoenix event. And the whole, the, even in the write-up of the Ghostbusters show, they're talking about how they're trying to bring the Traveller. The Traveller is the the demonic that's underground and they need to use a building to bring it up, add into the surface. And that's what this light is. That's the demonic coming through yeah. from the below, from the underground. And it's the Traveller. And the Traveller is the Destructor. And that's exactly the Phoenix. And that's even what the Jason's last video on the um, Apollo, the first seal being broken. It's all known that, about the destruction. And so Gozer actually tells them, choose your destruction. And I think that's what they're doing with the masses now. They're putting out all these narratives, whether it be the, you know, aliens or an EMF or solar flare, whatever. They're putting out all these things, getting people to choose what's going to be the destruction. This is what she said. She said to them, choose your destructor. So, I think, like with, with these demonics too, that they 
they do need a tool. Um, like even um, when you hear about um, like satanic rituals and that, I've heard them described as a technology, even in the the, the way that rituals are done too. But that the building itself can be is is a form of technology, is a tool for them to come yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why. So these the two dogs that are sitting there. One is the gatekeeper, and one's the keymaster. Now, if um, Giza is the gate, which is referred to as a, a gate portal, that's what makes me think. Well, the shrine and maybe other buildings similar to the shrine are holding some sort of key, which they're trying to activate. Yeah. Yeah. There's just some crazy weird references to this, and then just based off. Jason's last video where he actually worked out reading Book of Revelations. He said the Book of Revelations has been, um, what was it, translated in Greek, but it's actually written in ancient um, Sumerian and Akkadian. So he's translated all of that from the and the Greek modelling and it comes back to Apollo. So I started looking into Apollo and, of course, Apollo is the god of light. He's the sun god. Yeah. I'm like, well, that's, and hence we've got this, this reference to the shrine and all this craziness of, the light show being such a, a strong component of that whole building. Yeah, yeah. A, I'm, I'm gonna. I'll actually. I'll put a link to that video, Jason. It, it's so good. Um, yeah, wow. Well, yeah. Just like the the reference to the to the horseman and the fucking yeah, and the Hippocratic oath that blew me away. The, um, yeah, exactly. The, the, what is hippo? Hip means uh, horse, right? Horse. And there's horse no means, there's no yeah. rider. It doesn't, no. it never says rider, but that's been changed into English. So we, English, we say horse man. And you remember there's there's two horses on the outside statues. Because when we were looking at it, going, why is there a, a horse and a lamb? Sacrificial yeah. lamb, the blood of the lamb and everything. So it's because yeah. we're looking at it going, what's, what are they doing there? There's no reference to those. But then you've got other comments that are just a few notes that were in this book. And it's all about how um, this the shrine is, attaching Australia to the motherland. They don't make any reference to that. And they say the shrine is the proudest monument in Australia, connecting her back to the empire. Again, what empire? I also found out yesterday that the 1949, they dropped the whole British from the Commonwealth. So it's just Commonwealth. It's been since 1949, it's only been known as the Commonwealth. British was removed after World War II. So that, okay, so yeah, we know I saw, who I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. Because Britain is certainly aren't in control of Britain. So we know just all this strange stuff that you started to realise and they've put comments like the shrine being a temple rising towards the heaven, all quarters of the compass, um, and it, it greets each person who leaves the capital and will greet, will greet you on your return. What? Like it's just, there's so many weird, there was does that, a... Does that, um, what, what's the reference there to the capital again? Can you read that bit? So they've got, it stands like a temple rising heavenwards, visible from all quarters of the compass, and it will, the side of every citizen who leaves the capital and then first to greet him on his return. Mm. Yeah. yeah. You've got um, this journalist, this guy, Ambrose Pratt, was the journalist that wrote this um, thesis kind of thing on the actual shrine and what he thought it was. And a couple of comments he's made one, this, and this, I've said this one to you, it's so strange, but the shrine was fashioned to endure until solid earth dissolves. And then just moves right along, like what? That's, yeah, that's why I, I, found, I found interesting the reference to the capital. And try, what was, um, yeah, that's the one I sent you, the, because the Maloney, the Italian minister, <coughs> did the reference yeah. to the, the Temple of Jove or the Temple of Jupiter. And again, that's, um, and and the the temple of Saturn that I sent you from Rome, as well too, which was that's the original capital, yeah. and and it's very similar to the shrine as well. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of they even even to put this kind of comment in here. So this is back in the 1930s, and some visitor, I think it was a lady, when she first got to the the shrine, asked the question. That's one thing that someone's actually said this, and it's another that they've published it in the book that was done in 2009. But she's like, how does the mothership relate to the galaxy of memorials that have come to orbit it? Um, <laughs> from the man, yeah, from the man with his donkey in 1930 to the lesser but no less controversial memorials that followed the war to end all wars. That's it. That's just the comment, and they move right along. Like, 
<laughs> the mothership relate to the galaxy of memorials that have come to orbit it? What? <laughs> I mean, it's one thing, like I said, it's one thing to someone actually might say something mental like that, but... So what's the mothership? What are they talking about, the mothership? Exactly. exactly. I mean, who knows? There's no reference anywhere around that. It's just this comment they've thrown in there. But then this, again, Ambrose Pratt, so this journalist that wrote this, it's an interpretive appreciation of the shrine is what he wrote. And he said, that he declared that the end of his um, theory of the shrine is it belongs to the Periclean age, which is the ancient Greeks, and belongs to, I think it's um, Theodos, who's the one that created the Zeus statue, which is one of the seven wonders of the world. Original, it's been destroyed now. Pretty much all bar Giza have been destroyed and they all were destroyed by earthquakes. So mm -hmm. I don't think Giza can be destroyed. It's why it's still no. there. But um, yeah, it's just, they've got so much stuff. Like Homer and the Iliad, they make references to Homer and the Iliad and that's what the World War I vets were re- they were reinventing that whole Homer and the Iliad war with Troy, I think it was. And the, yeah. This is all in the Shrine book. I mean, this is just weird stuff. If you're not, if you're trying to avoid the fact that, again, it's pagan, it's a different. Yeah, say it's not pagan and shit, but yeah, we'll just yeah. mention Homer. <laughs> yeah, it's all through it. The whole thing's all the way through it. So, yeah, it's just weird stuff. Yeah. But then we get into. So now, which is what I think they've done, because if you look at, this sort of brings in Tataria as well, you can sort of see going back to the Ottoman Empire, which is what I think initially they're creating or has taken over, but that could very easily be the Akkadian Empire. So the Ottoman Empire was set up around 1299 and it ran for over 600 years, but they started to lose a lot of control around the 1700s. So you can see like late 1700s, a lot of European countries in particular started to, um, they had revolutions. So all the way from like the late 1700s to early 18, 20, 30, 40s. And they all sort of push back. And so then you could imagine, okay, then they've had a hundred plus years where they rebuilt, so they had technology, they had independence and you know, all this sort of stuff. And then this, they would, the Ottoman Empire being a very a huge little hat that ran the Ottoman Empire, they knew about the Phoenix event. So they knew that coming into that late 1800s, they could wait. So it's almost like they disappeared and went quiet for maybe 20 years or so and waited for that Phoenix event to happen. And as soon as 1902 it hit, like Jason said, they all came out, there was businesses everywhere, they're all over the place and they're taking over the world. All of a sudden we've got a lot of little hats in Australia in the late 1800s, particularly Melbourne. And then they're setting up our army, they're setting up, um, you've got the likes of Monash, who was very I, I didn't know, I didn't know, didn't know Monash was one until until you yeah. met. <laughs> yeah. And he was the one he pushed. He was the one mainly pushing for the shrine to go through. And again, nine to one. So nine against it and one portion voted for it. And that's who got it. So it was the elites and this particular John Monash is the one who swayed everyone to do it. So it's almost like then, so the early 1900s, this is where they sort of set up the whole... Ottoman Empire again, because it seemed to be back in the 1800s, it was particularly Russia, but also Germany were the main ones that defeated the Ottoman Empire. So they, that was the destruction of them. So they went quiet for a good 80 years or so. Well, they said that they were nowhere near as powerful anyway. They didn't have the control they had had for 600 plus years. But then in 1922, so the end of First World War, they were apparently completely dissolved. So it's like, well, what empire took over? And that's where it could very well be the Akkadian Empire came back. Which is Babylon? Yeah, yeah, it's um, yeah, and and just the way they do, because that's when they they kind of the nation state was basically created after World War One, wasn't it? it? Was the yeah, it was the destruction on the surface of the empires into the nation states, but it was almost like an absorption of of the the bigger empire in the background, right? Exactly. Yep. Mm. So. Now looking into, okay, so if it could potentially be either Ottoman Empire or the Akkadian Empire, which is all Mesopotamia, it was um, obviously the Akkadian, but it takes in Anatolia, which is Turkey. So Ottoman Empire was Turkey. So if it was still that, then you're looking at, well, the Freemasons call Babylon the birthplace of Freemasonry. And they, they revere Nimrod, which was also Nimrod established Babylon. We know they want Babylon back. We know that's what they've been trying to do. So I think they're actually doing it. And if you look into Nimrod, 
they're saying that Nimrod, Osiris, and Apollo, so the video that Jason's just done, they're all the same entity. Yeah. So it's just, I think they're actually recreating this. And of course, this is what Freemasonry is. is that's where they came from. And it was the Freemasons. Actually, I don't even know if we mentioned on the last one that the the guys that did the stone, the building of the actual shrine were the Lodge brothers. They established themselves in 1918 and they, they were, that was their surname. There was four brothers and their surname happened to be Lodge and they happened to have a stonemasonry business. <laughs> and they were the ones that got the shrine contract. I know. They're called the Lodge brothers. Yeah, that's their surname. So just a coincidence. Mm. And they happened to set up a stone. They're still, in, they're still operating today. They're still in Victoria now. Are they really? Yeah. Yeah. Vaughan and Lodge, but Lodge were the ones that did most of the stonemasonry work. Cutting up the blocks. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's interesting. So, yeah, is that the last? Uh, what else have we got here? Yeah, that's the last one for the, for that. So I can. You can, um, you can end the screen then if you want, if you want to make it bigger, or the, unless you're, yep. yeah. Yep. yep. So, <laughs> so what's your theory, Nick? What do you think? Well, they're definitely, I think, and like, the video they're going to post with Jason, and I think you really have to see that. That I was, I've just it, got like, to tell oh, people like because you sent that to me, and I was, um, oh man, I was blown, I was blown away. Even though, like, he he mentions um the the twenty twelve Olympics event yeah. too, with um because it was all about bringing out. So I didn't know, like, so Apollo is the is like the physician, right? And then mm. who's Apollo's son? Um. I can't remember the name, but Apollo's son is the that that's the symbol of the um oh yeah the, the ring DNA right that's used yeah. for the, the, the medical industry um and he very much he basically lays out doesn't he that the the uh, the the horseman the first horseman <laughs> is the um, is basically like the medic the medical empire um, yeah I knew I knew that uh, I want to print one out actually I knew we had to be in the first seal with COVID. It was just two struggles we're done with it. Yeah, so, ba so basically what he's putting down is that the, yeah, the first seal, um, what is that, four seals, right? Well, there's four, that's the four horsemen. There's four. seven altogether. But yeah. the sixth the six seal would be the return of the Phoenix event. Yeah. 2040. So, yeah, he's basically, yeah, but it's about just the way he lays it out. It's um, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. The reference the, to um, the first um, well, the, what is it, the harp, right? Because he, he speaks about the, um, the harp. Not the harp, sorry. The, 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 the bow and arrow. The bow. The bow. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and the arrow is the the magic. Yeah, it's, pre it's pretty undeniable the way he the way he puts that presentation yeah. forward, which is, um, yeah, it's pretty interesting when you think it. And it would yeah. tie into, like, we're at the building up to this – if, it, if it's to 2040, right? We've got another... <laughs> so that would average, that's about three years or so, three, three and a half years per seal. And that's what they've done with COVID. And you can sort of see they're starting to... So the first seal, for anyone that doesn't know, it's the Antichrist, the false messiah, worldwide deception, given a crown, that's the white horse. And that, like, like he makes that reference, the white horse is all the doctors in their white jackets. Yeah. The white coat, yeah. And, and um, second, Apollo's, Apollo's wife was corona yeah and yeah. apollo wears a crown as well yeah yeah and it's the sun god he's a sun well, god that's why god of light. He's talking to yeah well, that's that was like the apollo reference when they're putting the when they're putting the um, the purple on the shrine too because that's a that's another reference to corona purple, yep. is, purple is the corona <laughs> but all around that's I mean the whole the whole coronavirus, man. It was um, it's really a, it's a mind. I mean, it is a mind virus with the the fact that it's going to the crown. But it's like the, we're um, like harboring these these deities, yes. these beings, right, to come in. Yeah, and that's so. We when we went to the shrine, we sort of said this has to be some sort of portal, to some sort of tool that they're using. And then Jason also makes reference that they're trying to summon Apollo back. And they need portals to do it. So that's what they're, that's what all these things are. It's probably why that energy in Melbourne is so dense for the last three years in particular, because they're probably doing this, what they're doing at the moment. So would you suggest that this is this is just one of a, 
of a grid of these buildings all around. And I guess a lot of them were, were destroyed in the ancient world. Yeah. Um, it's almost maybe this is like the new modern inception of trying to bring bring forth those um bring forth those beings or those gods. I think so. And I don't know what what the ta- the tablets of destinies or you know the Ark of the Covenant, what that would actually be, these Ten Commandments. I mean to me it's some sort of code, potentially some sort of code that stops their ability to do this, hence why they don't want anyone other than themselves to have it. Because I read into the Ark of the Covenant or the tablets of destinies, whatever, wherever they're located, once the an empire changes power, that stone must be removed every time an empire takes over, so it changes. And the, the building that they were in previously must be destroyed. So right. that's why King Solomon's temple was destroyed. So they, they've been moved from there. Um, and if you look into this, they don't deny that the stone of destinies or tablet, you know, whatever they, they don't deny that they exist. So that no one knows where they are. Same as King Solomon's temple. They just say, oh, well, we don't know if it actually exists and we don't know where it is if it does. Well, it either does or it doesn't. You wouldn't say, we just don't know where it is. Yeah. It just wouldn't exist. Yeah, well, it's... Um... Yeah. But that's um, <clears throat> that's even the the like the planning around the 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 rebuilding of New Solomon's Temple too that they because you have to destroy to bring in the new and that that was that's kind of part of the plan that they were talking about destroying the Dome of the Rock, yeah, in, um, in Jerusalem to rebuild to rebuild the new temple, yeah. But is that is that the mo- is that the most obvious one though? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, I don't know. It's because it's not always it's not always the obvious. No. No. But then you have to look at so now you've got the second seal, which I think is what they're they're brewing now. So if you're looking, they're taking about three and a half years to run each of these seals, which would get you to about twenty forty for the sixth, which would be the major cataclysm of the Phoenix event. Yes, yeah, so go into, into the second seal. So the second is World War Three begins. So whether they're, and I don't think that's the whole Ukraine thing, that, that'll be potentially like you were talking about with the Palestine-Israel thing. That'll probably be Yeah, that. although, yeah, the Ukraine thing's the build-up to, yeah. to the, the Middle Eastern war, yeah. Yeah. So World War Three begins, Antichrist rises to power, great sword, great sword of destruction and the Red Horse. So whatever that's going to be. So what's the Red Horse? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Don't know. I, I, I was I was I was quite blown away that he he referenced that um he said yeah the Bible never says horseman that's the that's the English interpretation um yeah. and what does he say that the first the first horse was a, is a what do they call it, a centaur yeah so that's the half man half horse. it's, a, it's yeah. actually there's no horseman at all it's a half man half horse yeah it's the first horse right I can't, I can believe that and just the horse i've never heard of the horse reference to to medicine as the, the hippocratic oath so they're saying that when the doctors take the oath they take the oath to apollo they reference apollo yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's why i wondered whether this whole um the palestine thing is because jason has said in the previous video at some point they're going to brew this whole you know, they're building up this Christian revival at the moment, which will be then Palestine taking, like they'll try and take over Israel, take it back. Yeah. And then you look at, well, you know, Britain had so much of a hold over Palestine for so long. They had that 1917 Balfour Agreement. I'm thinking, well, no, it's Britain wanting to do with Palestine. But, of course, it's originally Canaan. Yeah. So Canaan goes back to Nimrod again. So Canaan was also established under Nimrod. So that's why they want it. It's why it's so important to them. It's bringing back this whole Babylon era. Well, it's just everything um, history repeating. You, you can you can even see the the build up to how they're going into the Holy Land. That's what, even like the Ukrainian thing now. They it's constant. It's the reference is that they were funneling. It's going to come out that they're funneling money into Ukraine to yes. give money to Iran, so Iran could attack Israel. And that's that. There's little stories coming out like that now all the time, and this is why they start. We're starting to hear the anti S word yeah. come out a lot more now because they're yeah. building, they're building up to that that mega ritual that they want to play out in the Middle East. Yeah. Well, it's uh, yeah. You can certainly see how they're building up this whole narrative, the whole Babylon thing. Because everyone's like, oh, is definitely going to be able to bring back Babylon? I think they're literally doing it now happening right around us and we didn't we're not really noticing yeah 
<laughs> they, they are literally doing it because you can sort of say the Ottoman Empire could really have a, had a lot to do with the, um, the whole Babylon narrative, Akkadian Empire. So they don't make any reference to who is the current empire that's in control. Because if you look now, if you go and look at all the, the large empires of the history, it showed that the British Empire was the largest in the early 20th century. So like, well, who is it now? Because it doesn't say anything after the British Empire. So they're not, that's they're not developing it. Right. To, to me, that word, there's no way that that's, um, that's accidental, that, um, you know, they're very careful with their words. If it was British Empire, they would say British Empire. Yeah. And um, I, ha I have heard in some circles that they that thought that the controlling hidden hand is, ju is just referred to as empire. The whole thing is empire. Right? So. Right. It's almost, um, I would, if you go back to the Apollo reference in that too, I would almost say, the, and Babylon, that it's like, it's the unseen empire. That's that's the ruling hand. It's the unseen, and that's empire, right? It's not even a physical yeah. empire. That's just me. Yeah. yeah, that would make sense, because that's how they've written it all through this book. It's not the empire, it's just empire. Yeah. Yeah. So they had to get for that, that coin, that the coin to go into the stone in the, I think it's in the sanctuary. But for that to go into the stone, they had to ask Empire. Yeah. Not the yeah. Empire, just Empire. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm con I'm convinced of that. Yeah, it's it's the unseen Empire. Mm -hmm. It's it's these the d demonic realm that they're trying to to recreate and bring in. Yep, and they're using these buildings. That's why the granite was so important. They were really particular about the kind of granite that was built for the shrine, and any any remodeling. They've always they tried to re get that same uh, granite and the granite was like we've mentioned in the first one anything that you look at as a significant building they've all been constructed out of granite yeah all of them and, uh, like so you you mentioned last time too the, with the granite too because it, th this goes into the reference of the mother and um <clears throat> the mother from the mountains as well and to bring yep. the bring the energy of the mother from the like the creation of the mountain into like a, a solidified yep. place of like say the shrine yeah. So they said that the Magna Magna Mater was the she was connected to the mountains and to the skin to stone in particular. And they said and references to her to the black rock. Yeah. That comes and sounds familiar. So and that hence why that stone, the plaque that's in the sanctuary, uh, in the crypt that's got the um where the love lights up, that's done out of black marble. So you think that I mean they, again, like you said, they don't mince up what they do. They're doing all this very specifically, but that had the reference to the mother goddess. So she was the first revered goddess in the world. But again, all of them, like all the stories are the same. If you read into all the goddesses, the stories are the same. A lot of the gods, the stories are pretty much the same too. Yeah. So they're just, it's just different names depending on what part of the world and what era it was from. But ultimately they they just change names. And again, probably just to confuse it makes me think of, um, <clears throat> makes me think of like, because Trump uses, they say MAGA, right? They're all the MAGA. Oh, yeah, they do, yeah. So, uh, that's the, it's definitely the woman too, because that's like the the Magdalene again. It's that Maga, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's strange, but I think that's we're certainly seeing it's all playing around us right now. Um, I don't think they had anything else left on that one in particular, but yeah, with the um, the goddesses that they've got on the building, they, and actually Jason mentioned this too, because it all said that all the goddesses were all about love and war which is a bit of a contradiction yeah so that's why you've got to change this word love it's not the same reference that we use it for i think it's more lust or something else yeah. but then they all were determined to protect the children and these gods so apollo was to protect the children they're like well protect them from who or what so it's almost like they're protecting them from us because they want we know how much they want the children yeah i've always been after the children yeah i heard that i heard that reference in there too it's um yeah, fucking bizarre. Yeah, it's strange. <laughs> it is. It's, it is weird. It's that's what I mean. This thing just gets the more you look at it, the stranger it gets. But everything then starts crossing over. You think, oh man, like that. It'd be interesting to see how many other buildings are around and whether there is one, particularly in each firewise country, which I'm sure there is at least. And that's potentially what they're using them for. Because again, just the strange reference of the eye for the ceiling of this roof. Yeah. Having the ray of sunlight, which is now attached to Apollo, which is attached to Nimrod, which is attached to Babylon. Like it's just it's just everywhere. Well, 
I put in that I put in that last one the year too because I was just looking around the streetscape there and they've got the they've got the Rising Sun Hotel and they're in a lot of um they're in a lot of towns. I know there's one in Bendigo, um, different locations, and that's um that's even used by the communists. That's like the the dawn of the new day, but that's all that's connected to the ray of light as well. So I just thought it was interesting. And actually it it, it, draws, it does like a line over to the that Helens Park area too. Yeah. But you said yeah. that it's got you said there's eight there's eight stones in that monument at the front as yep. well too. And that's what I, I kept um talking about like uh the building blocks when we we're talking about um tribal stories and that too of the spider and the grandmother spider. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that was connected to creation and being able to weave to weave together too. So to do like a stone monument of that, um yeah, it's interesting. See, that's there, even when looking because I know that's someone... because the part that it's off from the shrine, too. So it's almost like you could be that 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 is like that grandmother spot energy that's that's brought into that, and then what looks like the womb and the birth canal of the shrine. That, yeah, yeah, obviously connected. And the, but that came in afterwards, yeah. It looks, yes, pretty... yeah, yeah, they're later. But then you, I also looking into the whole goddesses as well. Because we wanted to see where does the spider come into these goddesses' story. So obviously we've got the spider grandmother, but even with Aphrodite. So Aphrodite, um, there was Arachne. Arachne was the one who was in Greece, and she said that she could weave her weaves better than Aphrodite. So that was a challenge. So the, Af- the whole narrative around Aphrodite is that she actually ended up weaving this Arachne in her own web, and that's where this whole spider narrative and how the spider cr- was created. Ah. So that was. Yeah, back to, again, going back to the Greek goddesses, which is how in the, you know, the whole, again, worldwide web. So we know that this whole spider system, we've watched all these video, all these movies now, like um, Maze Runner and all their references to these spiders yeah. at the end of them, and that we've got to defeat these spiders. So it's just this strange correlation. So when I was looking into Athena, Athena and Aphrodite, and they, yeah, they had this one where she was, Arachne was a person that was then weaved in her own web and then was turned into a spider. That's where that came from. Oh, that's bizarre, isn't it? It's, it's like, very bizarre. Yeah, and, that, and that's what I was finding. Yeah, with the spider too, that there was always like with most things that there um there's like inversions and there's like and there's multiple references to um to certain entities, right? There'll be a positive and a negative for each. And obviously, you know, with the spider reference with artificial intelligence and the internet, um, mm. yeah. I was wondering too, that, you know, I mentioned in the last time I mentioned about this movie, The Ninth Gate, and The Ninth Gate is going towards the light. So you're following the light, and that's the light of Lucifer. So that's on the gate nine. Gate seven is where the, the seven seals, that's where the heavens go quiet. It's almost, and because you keep talking about the, the number eight too, and there's so much references to eight to everything. And the movie Maze Runner, there was eight gates, wasn't it? Eight different gates. So it's almost like, and like you've always said, being neutral. So nine is going to the demonic side, seven's probably, it's probably the same thing. You're going to you know, stay almost in a purgatory type loop and eight is that neutral in the middle of the two, yeah. making that choice. So it's just, I was thinking about it. The day. Have to remember in Maze Runner too, that uh, when he, or to exit the maze, he had to, he exit the seventh gate. That was how he got out. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. It was the seventh one. Because yeah. I remember they had to track the maze. There was eight sections. Yeah. Eight sections of the maze, and this actually went that that went to like that what that lady was talking on the central coast that there was there was eight part when the earth split into eight parts in the creation story. Yeah. So yeah, they were referencing the eight, but they were ever changing, right? Now though, I don't know if that means the ley lines change because in the movie the Maze Run, they're talking about that the construct constantly changes and evolves, yeah. but it evolved, but it's in patterns, so it'll eventually go back to its same pattern. But then they came yeah. out. Remember, because they ki- he kills the spider, and the yeah. leg has a seven on it, and that tells him to to exit the main yeah, to get yeah. out of gate seven. Yeah, but and, yeah. I, and I guess that kind con- that kind of references to the shrine too, because you've got the you got the seven windows, the seven by seven windows at the top of the eye. So to exit, you exit out of the eye. Yeah, and that's even. Um, yeah, because that's they have an earth in with the seven, because the seven they say is like a lightning bolt. So it's like to ground it and then to the to the heavens. That's why it's written like that. Yeah. yeah. 
it's interesting. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> so what are we doing? Are we, do, are we doing a call out for anyone that's, uh, there was actually, there was some guy in the chat going, you don't know nothing about the shrine, shut the fuck up, stop that. We're like, this is the whole point, mate. We're trying to like, <laughs> trying to work it out. So, yeah. Exactly. Well, it's certainly not what they tell us that it is. That's as simple as that. And it doesn't take much to look at it. If you actually look at it and look at its history, it's not what they're telling us. Yeah. I just think um, anywhere that you've got, particularly you've got a big, a big city like Melbourne, where space is highly sought after, and then you yeah. have it's just like New York kind of thing too, right? And you've got this huge parkland in the CBD with this, you know, this um, what do you call it, like portal of like, yeah this thing right in the middle that's that's the center to the point where they were even wanting to um build new buildings and they couldn't do it because the the shade would if it couldn't interfere with the shrine so like what's so important yep. you could not you can't hamper this or hinder this building exactly it's um, exactly and it had to be where it was positioned it had to be in a central focus that you could see it at the time and obviously landscaping's grown around it now but at the time it had to be in a central position where it was viewed from the centre of Melbourne, yeah. and you could see it at the time because they cleared all the trees away. But what about um? What about that one I sent you? The um, <laughs> that guy that built an Egyptian tomb in the oh, which centre oh, yeah. in Melbourne? No, oh, I don't know. Man, it was bizarre. I remember. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Absolutely bizarre. I'll have to. I'll, I'll try and find a picture and put that in there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's probably what we've got on this one for now, I reckon. So, um, yeah, is there anything else? What else do you want to cover? Is there, is there anything else? Anything else you want to uh, talk about? No, not really. I don't think so. You want to talk about the life of Nikki? Not the... no, there's not a lot to talk about. It's not that exciting. <laughs> no, <it's not. laughs> You're the one who's traveling the world. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just chilling out now. I'm about to go. I'm going to do my fitness camp on Monday. Oh, um, wow. Okay. Yeah, but, um, I, I, maybe just go back to the start bit too, because I just um, yeah, I, I've, that's like it's a really cool story. So you you were you went you would like intuitively picked up this. Oh rock. yeah. Did you know yeah. you, you knew it was granite, right? Or that their area? You knew it was granite. What's the area? Called? It was granite. So this is it's up in Noosa, um, and it's just down on the the heads. But they've got it's actually a granite bay. Right up by, yeah. It's just thousands and thousands of these rocks sitting there. Um, but that was just, yeah, when I came back, I'm like, well, what else is in Noosa that I have overlooked? And you look around it, we've got a beautiful big uh, triangle hill out the back, which is full granite, yeah. some strange houses that are built into the bottom of it, which have extraordinary high, high security around these houses. And you think, why on earth? What are you so paranoid about? They're out yeah. in the middle of nowhere, built into the base of this triangle mountain that's made out of granite. And they're very high-end security. So I don't know whether there's something going on with that actual mountain or something else. But, yeah, I just looked around and there's just so much granite here and that's what got me looking into granite. But, okay, well, what's what's so special about granite? It's all around me. I mean, it's, I mean, Australia's got heaps of it, but it, it's everywhere here. All the mountains around the area are all basically granite. And that's where that's how the shrine came did up. Did you feel comfortable taking that rock? I'm always a bit worried about if I take it. No, and I'm more than happy to put it back okay. when it stops I'm talking. Just, yeah, okay. So, yeah. Bet, yeah, this is a bit of a bizarre question, but do you think, <laughs> do you think that rock that that's the rock that's been guiding you to that guided you towards the shrine? Maybe it was. Yeah. Well, it's it's why I looked into granite. It's why I looked into it full stop, and it's been sitting there the whole three and a half months, and just. Sort of almost leads where I look into different things and look what else have they used granite for, and it's only ever used on something significant. Granite and marble, which has also seemed strange, you know, working in this industry, they've made it so expensive so that the average person can't afford it. It's you know, crazy. Then you look at things like Parliament House. The new Parliament House they've built is all lined with marble wall cladding on the outside of the building. I mean, they don't, you know, they're not worried about spending good money on themselves. Imported from Italy, so it's, it's just. Yeah, and on the in, actually on the inside of the the part the new Parliament House, it's got the same those ceilings, those glass squares, same as the shrine. That's yeah. and pillars all the way through the inside. How many is there? Is it are they? Are they 
Not sure. There's heaps of them. The whole ceiling on the inside's like that in this. Oh yeah, of course, yeah. Tree. But that's up. Uh, yeah, I find that interesting too. That um, just going back to the because you know that's obviously the Australian capital that they would yeah. get the marble from Italy. It'd be interesting yeah. to know where, right? Yeah, that's a good point. I can think about that. And then you look at the inside of the actual the main grand staircases and everything. There are just pillars everywhere. Like it's they're not there for structural reasons. They are all over the place. There's stacks of them it's just it looks mad so it's just kind of like why have they done that so we know these like i mean i think of one of jason's old videos he was talking about how the pillars used to be the transfer of information so whether that's you know the, the below to yeah as so below that they're, they're, they're almost like a yeah like a funnel kind yeah. of thing it, it, it makes me think now too with the this these hawaiian fires right which is is obviously to me it's a ritual and you know that's a very high energy area, but it's it's almost again like that burning out of like a natural portal. What would be there too, and then them them trying to install these artificial portals. Well, there probably is over an organic portal anyway, but doing them through these um you know shrines and temples and um yeah and pyramids and such. But it's and that has the eight references too because the there's eight main Hawaiian islands as well. In that area, yeah. <laughs> Far out. Well, actually, I was thought when when Jason mentioned about Apollo in that last video, I actually thought that's what made me think about the fire when they brought when they got rid of the water and brought in the flame. And I thought, well, if this is the you know they always make reference to the sun being obviously yeah. a ball of fire, I wonder whether that's and then the ray of light and everything. So I thought, well, I wonder whether that's why that they had to get rid of the water and they brought in the flame because even the goddess stories. They always talk about the goddesses of uh, of Earth, and they were, hence Gaia and Mother Earth and everything like that. But they drew their powers from the water. Yeah, yeah. So, if you again, if you look at that, if you look at the the shrine, it's like that's the woman and the womb, right? That if you had that wa the water at the front, which is both the mirror to the the seen and the unseen, but also the birth canal <clears throat> and the woman, and then if you what so if you're getting rid of the woman the water what's that symbolically doing are you inserting the luminous flame or ai so it's you're closing off the womb or it's almost like the water's broken and you're you're now trapped that energy that you've wanted yeah. to override in do you know what i mean it's like two yeah. rituals so it's uh it's going from the water <clears throat> water to the luminous flame it's just one way to look at it maybe yeah definitely interesting <laughs> Uh, or, yeah, we'll have to, we're going to do part. So we, we, do you reckon we'll do a Q&A? Do you want to do a Q&A? Yeah, yeah, a lot of people seem to have some, a lot of thoughts about stuff and a lot of ideas and things as well. But, yeah, so people have got any ideas that there were questions or anything that they can think of. Yeah, so, yeah, if you've got any other info, just post it, um, post in the comments too. But, yeah, we might do a, we might do a Q&A. You can come and talk about the Shrine or anything else, Nikki, if anyone. <laughs> so we, we can do it. Um. I can do them. I think you can do them on Rumble, actually. Can't you do Rumble Live? I don't know. I'm, I'm not the tech person. I've only done them on YouTube, but, yeah, we should be able to do it on YouTube. I reckon it'd be good. Yep. Cool. All right. Thanks. Cool. Till next time. Thank you so much. All right. Bye.